All right, so we're joined from the studios of WJTV Channel 12 News Hello. by morning meteorologist, graduate of Mississippi State, Gracie Dinkos. We thank you so much for joining us today. I've got a room full here with us at Velma Jackson. This is for all of our computer science engineering uh, students in Madison County Schools. Uh, Madison Middle School, Rosa Scott, Madison Central, Old Town Middle, Ridgeland High School, Germantown Middle, Germantown High School, my friend Angela Jordan over there, Shirley Simmons, the Academic Options Center, and our YouTube channel. So we thank you so much for sake, for taking some time for us because you guys just finished your uh, show for Live at Nine, which you're also featured on. And uh, we thank yes. you for joining us because I think this is one of the coolest jobs. In, I do uh, too, personally, because <laughs> you, you deal with you deal with computer science, you deal with weather, you deal with geography, and then at the end of the day, you got to be live on television. So it is so many skills tied up absolutely. into one. So really look forward to hearing about it. Absolutely, absolutely, and it it really is. It's so much compiled together. It's a great job. It's a great industry. I love it. I absolutely love whenever students tell me, you know, they get to meet me and. They tell me that that's something they want to do or even anything in the science field in general is just absolutely incredible, uh, especially for women in the science field and the STEM industry. Um, it's just it's a great um, something to hear from young students that are aspiring to be something when they get older. So I would love any questions and any feedback, too, once we get done. But I was telling yeah. uh, you, I, I did put together a little just PowerPoint to kind of give yeah. you an overview of what's um what I do on a daily basis and a little bit of background behind me and my life so that's just a little um intro there but we can go ahead and get started I will flip the screen Let's see if I can <clears throat> and you just tell me if y'all can't hear me or if I need to stop or anything like that um it's so sideways just... but we see we see it but it is sideways okay is that better? Uh, yeah, that worked fine. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and start. Um, sorry for that. I guess I could have presented on my computer back in the office. I just wanted to be kind of in a secluded space in our one of our edit bays. So we had had more of one-on-one -on -one and for questions and stuff like that. So this oh, is what I've fine. got. Um, Life in TV news. This is uh, my personal experience so far. And then... If y'all have any questions afterwards, we'll have time to for y'all to ask those. So, yes, as Greg had mentioned, I am a morning meteorologist. A lot of people hear that. And their first question is, you know, how early um, do you have to wake up? Things like that. It is kind of crazy hours for us here in uh, the TV industry as a whole. But definitely morning side is one of the hardest, I would say, hours purposes. Um, here's my introduction. I am actually originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I am currently 23 years old. I'll have birthday in a couple of months, be 24, but um, my current position is weekday morning meteorologist. I am at Channel 12, that's WJTV, and I've been here for about two years. I'm coming up on two years, April 1st, so one more month ago. And um, I previously worked in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, as a part-time weekend meteorologist. And I was there for about one year as well before I graduated. So like you had mentioned, I did graduate from Mississippi State and I had a bachelor's degree. I got a bachelor's degree there and the College of Arts and Sciences. Our concentration is actually called broadcast meteorology, but my degree was in geosciences. Sometimes wow. I, I would tell yeah, I would tell people that and they were like, oh, wow. OK, so you study rocks. So no, not quite <laughs> studying atmospheric sciences. Uh, so it's a little bit different there. And I got a minor in communications. Everyone with that concentration walks away with a minor in communications as well. Um, obviously, we've got to know the on air side of things just as much as the science side of things. So one in three on-air meteorologists, y'all may have heard this already. It's kind of well known at this point that a lot of on-air meteorologists graduate from Mississippi State. But the statistic is that one in three on-air meteorologists that you see 
got their education, whether that be online, in person, um, through our distance learning. We have all kinds of things. Yeah, um, and, and so, that's nationwide. That's not just here. That is literally all over the absolutely. country. Absolutely. It is, which is crazy. You know, um, not many people think Mississippi State University is you know, educating this many meteorologists across the entire U.S., but it's really cool when you start actually looking into some of maybe your favorite people you watch on national television. They probably got their degree from one of the big meteorology schools, and one of those yeah, happens and, to me. And not to cut you off, but just real quick, that's a perfect example of, you know, you're from Baton Rouge, you grew up an LSU fan, but in exactly. order to have the best, the best place for you to pursue your career, you had to go to a college that offered that program. So we see Absolutely. a lot of kids that go where their parents are fans of or where their friends go, but they wind up not being in a good place academically. So if you know your uh, career aspirations involve a certain degree, it's important to look at the schools that offer that degree. So it really is. Not, yeah. You know, if you're not an Ole Miss fan, but Ole Miss offers what you have, that's where you need to go. So I, exactly. I can't stress that enough. And that's a perfect example of that. And especially given, yeah, I mean, to all of the students listening, high schools especially, you get to thinking, like you just said, I mean, in high school, you want to go where your friends go. You want to go where your favorite team's at. For me, that wasn't the case. I knew no one going to Mississippi State, but I knew that in the long road, I was going to be good, better at Mississippi State. I was going to be better off. Not to say that places in Louisiana don't have a good program, because LSU is actually really um, stepping up. They've They've got some geoscience programs. I know someone at a, a neighboring station around here actually is working there. Uh, she graduated from LSU. So it is, there's other places, but Mississippi State, I mean, they just excel in this industry, especially broadcast side of things. And they, we have an awesome program outside of broadcasting too. I'll talk about that in just a few minutes um, as far as everything that is required of you during that degree or during the uh, undergraduate studies. But I just want to talk a little bit about a few frequently asked questions because we get a ton of them. I tell people that my job is on air meteorology and most people respond with, wow, that's so cool. So blah, blah, blah. And so I just put together a couple of ones that I'm always answering on a daily basis. And one of them to start is what made you realize that you wanted to be a meteorologist, specifically on air meteorologist, because again, it's just not a usual job. There's not a ton of us out there. Well, for one, I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I told you guys that. So we experience, of course, tons of tropical weather and all kinds of extremes, just like we do here in Jackson and central Mississippi. Um, I was never afraid of weather. That is, that's something you typically hear from meteorologists that it it stemmed from a fear of bad weather. But for me, I was always interested. I always wanted to see the thunderstorms outside. I wanted to know why we were getting out of school for a week for Hurricane Gustav and Hurricane Katrina and why we were, you know, all this stuff. It just, it was crazy to me. And I was so fascinated by it. And in high school, I actually started a, um, I got involved in our newspaper and our uh, broadcasting program that we had it was an actually an extracurricular thing I did in high school and so originally I just thought I want to do something helping people I want to get you know information important information out to people and then it just kind of clicked for some some reason in high school that I really really still wanted to pull in some kind of aspect of the science and math love that I had in high school um, so that's when I realized okay uh, this is a great idea let me look into it and just like you said, the first thing I saw was Mississippi State, and that's where I pursued that degree. So um, that's just a little little snippet of kind of where I was when I decided to do that. And of course, it's been a long road coming, but I have, I'm happy to say I have improved. I have grown so much in my career so far, and hopefully there's much more of that down the road. Um, so another one people ask me is, do you use someone else's forecast and just get on TV. <laughs> um, absolutely not. Um, I would be lying to say, oh, I wish that would be that easy. But honestly, I love the forecasting side of it. That is, again, my passion. I love the science side of it. I love looking at models. I love seeing the different um, statistics that we can look at. It's a long process that goes into it. I have a long, long checklist and I could show y'all. Um, I don't have them right with me, but I can also just go through 
a daily, a daily life on what I do, but it takes me about an hour, uh, 45 minutes to an hour to get together an eight day forecast. And then the other hour of that is usually putting together graphics, getting ready. That means TV ready. So hair, makeup, get dressed, all the things. So usually we have, we allot ourselves two hours before every newscast starts to do the preparing side of things, which includes making my own forecast. So no one writes it for me. I don't just pull up an app. And that's another reason you'll hear meteorologists say, if you want the most accurate forecast, you need to download your local TV station and get their forecast. That's the most accurate you're going to get. It's the most hyper local forecast you're going to get. You can look at and not to knock them, you can look at all these other big national TVs stations and their their newscast, as well as other programs. They have all kinds of stuff. But regardless, you're going to get the most accurate if you are using a local forecast. Okay, another question I get is, do you have people do your hair and makeup? Does your work provide your on-air clothing? I wish that would make my life so much easier. Uh <laughs> I spend, I've gotten, I've really nailed it down, gotten to a T of how quick I can do it now, especially working in the mornings. Oh, I think I can do a full face of makeup in about 10 minutes now. And for my girls listening, y'all know that's, that's pretty hard. <laughs> um, but it is, it's time consuming. We've got to look presentable though. It's a part of the job as sometimes annoying as it may be, you know, you've got to do the part. And unfortunately, back in the day, some TV stations would give you a clothing, makeup allowance, and even hair allowance. Now that is not the case. So it comes out of our pocket as well. Um, and then another thing, what's your favorite weather phenomenon? So I'm going to give you all two of them. One a little bit lighter, like good phenomenon, and one that is, of course, hard. And um, the first one being that one, the one that interests me the most, and it's severe weather, particularly tornadoes, um, tor tornadic genesis, like just the developing of everything that goes into it, what it can do so quickly to a community um, is heartbreaking and it's devastating, but it's part of my passion. And, and the reason I am so passionate about it is because I want to keep people safe as much as I can do. Um, and that's, that's why we do what we do. That's why we cut into some of the biggest programs, why people get so mad and so upset, but it's a part of the job. My other one would have to be sunrises or sunsets, particularly sunsets, because there is just something so beautiful and amazing that you can't even put into words between every sunset. It's never the same as one before. It's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so another one, of course, with being on the morning shift, what time do you wake up and what time do you go to bed? Well, it's really different every night, although it shouldn't be. Don't listen. Don't lead by example. Um, you probably should get a good eight hours of regular sleep. But unfortunately, it just doesn't happen that way for me. Most of the time, I try to go to bed at about 6 o'clock, waking up at 12.45, 1 o'clock. Um, I get to the station. My shift starts at 2 a.m., um, give or take a few minutes, of course. Given those hours, it's a little, a little rough some mornings. Um, but... Some mornings I'm working on two hours, three hours, four hours of sleep. It just depends on the day. So that's a little bit there. Yeah, uh, those hours can fluctuate because if there's some severe weather going on, you guys are going to interrupt Blue Bloods or 60 Minutes or FBI International to let everybody know about the uh, about all the stuff going on because I've tried to watch stuff on DVR and I've got Ken South on there telling me about what's going on. <laughs> Absolutely. And we hear, we, we get an earful whenever we do interrupt, especially like last year during um, the March tornado outbreak, it was March Madness that we had to break into and people were not happy at all. But then of course, unfortunately, it turns out to be an EF for deadly, devastating tornado. And we had viewers email us back. We had viewers call the newsroom thanking us, thanking Ken, thanking us for making that call and breaking in, even though we really didn't we were reluctant. We did want to, because that's our job, but we were reluctant. And um, same goes, we had a severe weather, I think, potential a couple weeks ago on the Super Bowl Sunday. And it was the same thing that went through our heads. It was like, we're about to make some people really mad if we have to break in tonight. <laughs> Thankfully, we didn't. 
But um, that goes to say, again, with hours, it just depends on the weather. It's never the same. Some nights I'm here. There was a time I was on air for over 12 hours. Me and meteorologist Jake Dalton, he used to work here um, before a couple months ago. We were on air for a full 12 hours back and forth. It was it was a really rough night, but it's something about severe weather coverage and you'll probably hear this from other meteorologists as well. You get this adrenaline rush that you just don't really get tired. Like I, I get weak, like as far as my body goes, I want water, you know, I want to sit, but as far as my energy goes and mental strength, like you get an adrenaline like no other. Yeah. Um, so sometimes, you know, I'm here all kinds of hours. It just depends, but that's kind of what I had roughly kind of, um, presented for y'all I do have a little summary here and it's just goes to say um make sure I didn't skip one nope okay and I just said if you love what you do you will never work a day in your life that saying is so very true for me and many others in the television news industry it's definitely not an easy job but when you're passionate, you're so passionate about something, it makes everything you do worth it. Um, and that's in any industry. It's no job is going to be easy or perfect in every way. Um, and then another thing, this is a very science, technology and math heavy field through everything we do. And that's um, a reason that you know, your teacher, Greg, has has reached out to meteorologists, to me and several others, because we do deal with so much technology, so much science. And in school, we deal with a lot of math. I will say we don't do all of the hard math classes. I don't use that kind of stuff every day, but I am thankful for my education because if I had to write out all of those formulas right now, I probably could with some notes behind me. Um, but I also just want to say, if you're interested in meteorology of any sort, just keep studying, keep focusing on those hard core classes, math and science, ask many questions, and of course, get internships if you are able to. And then I just have another little quote, success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Wow. And then I have some information here y'all can probably get it online as well but if y'all want ever want to reach out to me i have my email address there it's just gdencoss at wjtv.com and my phone number as a station that's not my personal number so if you want to call me at the station leave me a voicemail and i'll call you back um, usually again my hours are weird i'm out of here at 10 or 11 a.m that's when my shift starts is 2 a.m to 10 a.m so anyways uh that's all that i have as far as um, my PowerPoint goes, but I'll I'll be on here as long as y'all want me to be. I'm excited to talk to y'all and everything. That well, you're gonna I, do I, well, I have yeah. things I wanted to ask about as well is obviously you mentioned the amount of science and technology you deal with. Now, obviously, since I started watching Ken, you know, he, Ken and David Hartman have been in Jackson for since I've been a little kid, and I'm in my 40s. Right. Obviously, technology has changed at an uh, at an exponential pace even in the last few years. And I know that you deal with multiple computer screens to, to, to set your forecast. So what are some of the computer programs that you use and that you've even had to learn since you graduated from, uh, from Mississippi State in order to have an accurate forecast? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question. We have two main um, weather programs that are available to us in the meteorology field. One of them is called Max weather solutions one is called barren and at mississippi state we're actually trained on barren and many stations still use it but there are also a lot of stations i think the majority of stations use wsi and so at my first station i was at during my college years because i was at wvua when i was a senior in college and when i was there thankfully they did have wsi so i got hands-on um, really good experience with that program before I started a new full-time job. And I'm very thankful for that. Although, like you said, I still had to learn some more things. There was a big learning curve, even leaving a station that used the same programs because every station does it differently. Every chief wants things differently and you have different things that are sponsored, different graphics you have to use every day um, that just kind of go in and add to your workload. So we have to use, we have to know how to use those, that graphic system. We also just have a lot of 
um, websites on our daily tasks that we have to do. One of them being uh, we have to look at Pivotal Weather is a big one I use. We have Weather Bell. These are all free websites. You can pay for a subscription and we do pay for them for our station purposes. And you get everything under the sun you can imagine that you need for meteorology. So you get um, surface level analysis, you get temperatures, you get dew points, you get relative humidity, you get different layers of the atmosphere, all of those maps laid out for you in an easy to, to see format. And that is what helps us do our forecasting every day. We also use National Weather Service a ton. We use the products they put out, the Weather Prediction Center, Storm Prediction Center, National Hurricane Center. But they put out so many different things that we can use and specifically for surface analysis purposes, I use that every single day in one of my graphics called the next weather maker. That's when we show surface highs, show um, upper level highs, surface low pressures, cold fronts, uh, stationary fronts, warm fronts, all those things that kind of help me tell my weather story a little bit easier. We have that on our computer to forecast for. Yeah, and, and also my social studies people will appreciate the fact that I did mention at the beginning, you got to have some geography skills, too, because you got to know how to read a map. You got to know how, yeah. how to explain a map and you have to know what areas of the map are going to be in your viewing area. Because when exactly. you're given a forecast, you need to worry about Tupelo, not that every, people in Tupelo aren't important, but they're not in your viewing area. You don't need to yeah, worry about the Gulf. Not that they're not important, but they're not in your viewing area. And you have to know cardinal right. direction. Like all that is. You know, the kids talk about, I don't need to know this stuff, but in this field, knowing geography is extremely important. Yes, no, it absolutely is. You have a good point there because that was one of those things. Um, geography is one core class that we have to take before we even get into the meteorology field. But then once we get into, again, it goes to say with hyper-local forecasting, it's so important to know every as much as you can. I can't say every little street and detail of a community, but as much as you possibly can is so helpful. And that is what I tell people. We just hired a new meteorologist um, not too long ago. And that's the first thing I tell people when they come into the station is that they need to sit down with a blank map of Central and South Mississippi. We actually have two markets in our viewing area for WJTV because we forecast for WHLT, which is the Pine Belt. That's the Hattiesburg WDAM's market, um, but we we simulcast our newscast down there as well. So that's a little bit of different uh, tidbit. If you watch maybe WAPT or WLBT, they don't have Southeast Mississippi and theirs, and they don't have to go on air for their um, tornado warnings or watches or anything that they're talking about. We actually, it's different. We can, um, if we have to break into programming, we can just break into WHLT, which is really helpful when we do have a tornado warning down for the Pine Belt. Yeah, and they get so, them a lot down there. Southern Miss Alum, they, I know all about. Yes, they definitely do. Um, and so that's the first thing I did when I came here. And Lindsay at at uh, Mississippi State, she is our, well, I forget what her exact title is, but she is the reason that we all have jobs. We all know what we're doing. She trains us on the green screen. She gives us every little in, bit of information we need to know before heading out to the broadcast meteorology field she's incredible um so she that's the first thing we do we have a test on every county name every city name in northeast mississippi which is where we practice forecasting for while we're at mississippi state because if y'all don't know we have two years of green screen experience and practice we call it practicum broadcast meteorology so you have to have one and two before you graduate with a degree in broadcasting so yeah, it really yeah. is helpful yeah, because it, it, it used to blow my mind as a kid that when you're showing a broadcast, that map behind you is what you see on the screen. You have a green screen behind you, so mm -hmm. you have to be familiar with where things are, and um, you're looking at the map in front of you. Now, yeah. a couple of things I do want to talk about as far as off-camera jobs, as far mm -hmm. as meteorology. And, I, you know, I know Ken will want me to mention about the meteorology program at Jackson State um, because they do have their 3D weather simulation lab now. But a lot of, you know, there's people that go there that aren't on the broadcast side. So if somebody wanted mm -hmm. to get into meteorology, because obviously there's always going to be a need for it, but they're like, yeah, I'm not really a camera person, but I enjoy the weather. What are some mm -hmm. other areas that meteorologists could work in? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question because I took classes with all of those people that are just as important that are behind the scenes. Um, especially at the National Weather Service. I'm sure y'all know, but we have um, 
broad, we have meteorologists that are operational meteorologists, is what we call them. They take the same classes as us. Some of them do stay for a couple of extra years to get a graduate degree. I actually consider that myself. Um, if I ever wanted to go into aviation was one thing that really interests me. But then I don't Absolutely. love flying and I don't love the aspects of that. So I was like, maybe not. Maybe let me maybe reroute or just <laughs> go ahead and get into the the broadcasting side of things and maybe think of a plan B later if I want to leave it. But like you said, there's so many other needs for it. We have aviation meteorology, we have operational meteorology at the National Weather Service. You can work for the National Hurricane Center down in Florida. You can, there's so many, the Storm Prediction Center in Oklahoma. There's so many other areas that you can work in. Also, emergency management is a good one. If you, I know Scotland, actually, she left the TV industry and she works in emergency management now. She loves it. Uh, there's another, other like um, state jobs that you can get that are very, very helpful and just as important. And a lot of people, you're right, a lot of people don't want the on air side of things. They don't want all that comes with that. So everyone is, is cut out for a different purpose, especially even in the meteorology field. And also in the military, the Air Force and Space Force especially have yeah. highly trained uh, have highly trained meteorologists that guide the airplanes. They're not riding in the airplanes, but they need yeah. they need meteorologists with like we said with advanced technology. A lot of these mm -hmm. scientific fields need weather people. So even Absolutely. if you don't want to be on TV, meteorology can find a place for you. Absolutely, and Jackson State does have an awesome program. That's that's where you uh, just mentioned a minute ago. Our chief meteorologist Ken South, he got his degree there. And another one of our meteorologists, Kayla Hudson, she also graduated from Jackson State. So it's it's a great program there. That's one right here at home. There's also, you can go to Mississippi State and attain a really good operational meteorology program as well. Some of our professors there, um, one of them in particular, Mike Brown, Dr. Mike Brown, he is a state climatologist here in Mississippi. And so he's one of our core teachers for the last couple of years with our meteorology classes. He teaches things like radar, he teaches um, several other things that are absolutely necessary to graduate with a degree in, in meteorology. So he's awesome as well. Now, also, I want to talk about, you know, somebody's not interested in meteorology, but they're interested in the television side. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of jobs there at the station that we never see that are off camera. And then absolutely. I thought I did not know this until Blake told me this. You guys don't even have people operating the cameras. You have automatic cameras. So and there's no a lot favorite. of technical advances in the news industry where you don't necessarily have to be on camera, but you can find a, a great career uh, in television. Absolutely. And I was going to say, Greg, too, if you want me to, um, I'm absolutely can go around the station and give you all a little oh, yeah. tour. Um, but like you said, there is so many people behind the scenes and we can go see them real quick. I'm not sure if they're in the control room at the moment. We don't have a current newscast going on right now. They're preparing for the, the 12 o'clock show that happens at noon. So you're right that we have um, journalists that give that make the stories they produce. They go out and shoot the stories. They come back. They write the stuff for the stories. They put the graphics in. They do all of that, putting it together. Those are some of the things that air on TV that sometimes you that don't even see them. I have to cut you off, but that includes Velma Jackson alum, Delisha Banks, who is now really? one of your yeah. multimedia journalist and she is yeah yes. that's exactly what she does but she's been shooting stories on her own around the metro area and uh -huh. then been putting the together and doing the voiceover so that is yeah a, a, you know great way to get started in the industry she's doing great as well i haven't had a chance to meet her face to face but she's doing great i've seen some of her stories already um so that's and we have a lot of jackson state graduates as well they and that's just, again, just on the broadcasting side of things. You don't have to get a science degree. Uh, you don't have to do meteorology to do television news. And there are so many other things. We have directors. We have producers. Producers are the ones making the show. They put everything in. They line it up. That makes sense. They tell us, you know, you have this much time. We actually have to tell them sometimes whenever weather's really, really heavy. It needs to be at the top of the show. It needs to be have this much time, you know, I need extra time today. We've got a lot going on kind of thing. We go to our producer. So they produce the show. Directors will come in our ear. We have a thing called an IFB during newscast. They will tell us, stand by. You're about to be on live television. You know, your mic's hot. All these things will count us in, count us out. Everything's so time heavy as well. I'm sure you can understand that. Newscast, we have such an amount of time to be on air before our next program airs. So you can't just keep talking. You can't run over kind of thing. So it would not happen without our directors, our producers, 
uh, without even the, the top guys here at the station. We have a news director. He is um, Ty. He is great as well. We have our general manager. We have our assistant news director, Tom Wright. And so we have so many people that are behind the scenes that it doesn't just happen with one of us. And like you said, we thankfully have the um, the availability of robotic cameras now. We don't even have to have actual camera guys in there. But if we did, camera people would be telling us they would use their hands. It's kind of interesting. Uh, my old station, they did have camera guys. They would still do the hand motions to give us the time cues. Because back in the day when they didn't use IFBs, that's how you knew how much time you had left to talk. So it's it's pretty interesting because um, coming here, just being a bigger station, like, like I said, there's a learning curve. A lot of stations do it differently. There's more technology. As we speak, we're, you know, we're thinking of how can we make this more efficient? How can we do our job better with the more technology that we have available to us? Yeah, we'd love to see uh, whatever you're able to show us real quick around the station. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to talk all deer off, so I was just... Um, okay, let me see if I can flip this around. I'm actually in one of our edit bays. I typically don't go in here because I don't do much editing as far as um, writing stories and everything goes, but I will, oops, excuse me. <laughs> that was one of our creative services guys. He's, he's really good. They make all of our cool graphics and everything that we use. So right now I'm walking into Studio B. Right now it's just... um. Not really used for much except for some promos and some headshots but when and if we redo our studio they would make this into a makeshift studio for us to get by while they are fixing ours up and i'm uh, i'm going to show you all the control room right now this is oh. where it all happens we got tons of screens back here we've got cameras live eye cameras our directors can help us get those all ready for our shows. We've got uh, Bridgeland there, Vicksburg, the Res, got Focused on Health because it's Thursday. Um, we've got Downtown Jackson, we've got our Pearl camera as well. Lots of buttons here that I do not know anything about. Um, would not even try to press these buttons. Wouldn't want to break something. But our directors and producers are very talented and knowledgeable of all the things so they are the ones back here making everything look the way it does. This is Jimmy. He's one of our directors. He's been here. How long have you been here? 30 years. 30 years. He makes it all happen. It all looks great thanks to him. All righty. Thanks, Jimmy. Okay. We are going to head into the studio now. And I will take you. Actually, I'm going to take you all to the newsroom First, I do have Tao Tall, who I work with every day. She said she would love to say a little bit. Um, so. Oh, we'd love to have Tao. She, yeah. she does a great job. So this is where all of our the work happens. We've got our assignment directors up there. We've got producers um, working on stories. This is Tao. How's everyone? <laughs> We're good. Would you like to tell them about kind of what we do? Yes. Yeah, Me and Tao work together this morning. I know it is quiet here. Oh, perfect. That, that was weird. I'm sorry about that. I hope that wasn't my fault. We're back. All right. Here's Tao. So let me just show you. So since we have a new newscast in just a bit, we're gonna, I'm gonna go for the rundown, which yeah. is basically like the stories for the day. So some of it is, there is a high school welding competition we're gonna talk about. What's going on weather-wise. Um, let's see, and we have a hometown that's uh, tomorrow. So you're gonna wanna tune in for that. We're gonna be here in Jackson at the Food and Wine Fest. <laughs> awesome. And you're working on your Remarkable Women story as well I'm trying to so Tao is uh she's with me in the mornings we get started about 4 30 in the morning every monday through friday so we do the first half of the morning show and then kayla comes to join us at about 6 a.m mm -hmm. and then they have of course their new live at nine show as well so it's usually us three and then marie minifield works uh, the morning reporter she's not here on wednesdays or on thursdays sorry on thursdays and then um Today's Morgan. Yes, and today's Morgan. She's over there as well. 
Say hey, Morgan. Okay. She's our uh, journalist in the morning as well. This is Tia as well. <laughs> All right. Hey, <Okay>. thanks, Chow. <laughs> Okay, and this is where our evening um, anchors, Melanie and Byron, sit when they come in. They'll come in at about two. I didn't, I didn't tell David what we were or Roberto what we were doing, but he is, um, he is our other meteorologist. He's new here, and I've oh, got cool. Belmont High School on our on Zoom with them. I just went over kind of what we do on a daily basis and the education side of things he also graduated from mississippi state this past oh. december right go dogs yes um so he is here working on his graphics i don't want to keep you too long i know you got a show to prepare for but yeah this is velma high school their stem class yeah. so this is roberto he is our now your position is monday through friday are you excited about that i am excited. <laughs> yes he's got a 10 to 6 right in six, he does the noon show, and they'll do traffic later for the early evening shows. So he's cool. great, great addition to the team. Thanks, Roberto. So he's actually working on, uh, this is how his forecasting computer right here. And then those are the graphic system I was talking about a few minutes ago, WSI. We've got a lot of other stuff that Ken keeps up here for us to look at as well. We've got a TV there so we can see ourselves as we are on TV, or if we want to turn our competitors on, WLBT and WAPT, um, we can watch them on there as well. So this is where we stand right here. Usually we don't see those words, that script right there. We have a button, we can press it, and we see a reflection of ourselves. But this is the green screen I'm standing just behind. We've got two big old monitors right there, one TV there, one TV there. So each way we turn, we can see exactly what our graphics are showing we also have this handy computer. This is showing the same thing that Roberto is currently working on. And this way, when we have severe weather, we can pull this stand closer to the TV if we need to, or we can keep it over here and put all of our severe weather graphics up and just stay there the whole time until the warning is over and we're able to get off wall to wall coverage. This is what we call the weather lab. It's just another location to take hits from, take shots from. We do our teases. We do all kinds of stuff here. And the morning show is a little bit different. Again, a camera there, a screen here, a screen here, all to look at for whatever you need. Here's our big wall hit or or big wall, we call it. Uh, for the morning shows, if y'all ever watch, I actually do weather hits from there. I have specific graphics just for the big wall hits. So that's pretty cool. This thing right here is a uh, scroll. I don't really know what to call it. It's what our anchors will step on to move the script up and down depending on the what speed that they read at. So this is where our anchors wow. will sit. And yeah, pretty cool. So some stations do it differently. Some have a prompter person that's in the back just running the prompter and some people have a little thing they hold in their hand a remote that they scroll with we have pedals that you step on to scroll this is another shot area usually it's our it's our sports monitors what we call it but we take all kinds of shots from here to monitors as well this is also where roberto will do his traffic hits later tonight the 4 30 4 and at the five o'clock show so Got all of that. Tons of cameras. These are our robotics camera, robotic cameras that we were telling you about. We've got camera one, uh, two, and three, I believe. Forget all the numbers. But if we had people, cameramen, they would stand back here, press the buttons, give us the time cues and everything like that. We also have another Mac system over here. We've got three Mac systems. That's what all of these computers are for. Another area we can work is right here. Again, this oh. is where um, Roberto will do his traffic later. While we have two people in, Ken will be there doing weather. This will be our traffic center. And then this is where we can look to see all of our cameras, which ones we want to show on air. That I just showed y'all in the back, the control room. Same thing for that. So really, really cool. Lots of technology, lots of um, different things and tools that we have to get used to using. I'll flip this around for us um but it's yeah it's a it's a lot to learn it's a lot of fun every job here is crucial to make a newscast and there's a lot that goes into it as i'm sure y'all can y'all can see already 
There's tons and tons of stuff. And we also have a storm tracker outside. I'm not sure if they're here because sometimes we have um, our Botox go out and use them to do stories and stuff if there's not another car available. But they're really helpful if we have enough hands on deck for a severe weather event to send a third or fourth meteorologist. Sometimes it's a journalist. If Again, if we're just really don't have enough people to do wall-to-wall coverage and that, but they'll go out there and not necessarily chase the storm, especially at night. It's not safe for us to be out there. Now, as a meteorologist, we are the most knowledgeable to be out in the field um, safely, but especially during night at during the nighttime, it's just dangerous. So if it's during the daytime, we will send someone out to quote unquote chase. Um, but of course, we're always going to do it in a safe way. We're not going to put anyone, anyone's life in danger. A lot of the times we're going to look at the after math of a storm that we air from our storm tracker, either thunder or lightning. Yeah, it's not like the movie Twister. We, we, we all saw it, but uh, that's a very specialized skill. That's not the TV meteorologist. Absolutely. Yeah, that's not that's not what we're, what we're doing. Now, what's really cool about Mississippi State, too, if you are super interested in storm chasing, which for a time I really was, and I, I thought this could be a full-time career, and then, you know, I got talking with my family, and not that it's very dangerous. Like I said, if you're knowledgeable and you're skilled in that, you can do it, but it just made my family a little nervous, you know, and as, as rightfully so. It's a scary thing, especially out in the Midwest, but that's where it's the best time to track storms and our um, professors usually it is Dr. Barrett Gutter Um, he's at Mississippi State he'll take and usually I think Mike Brown has gone before I forget in years past who exactly has gone but they'll take a group of Mississippi students or broadcast meteorology and operation meteorology all kinds we have the opportunity to go and they'll take you on I think it's a two-week trip to out Midwest and just travel all up and down the United States to find and chase whatever storms. And that is true, true storm chasing. They want you to have the best experience. They want you to be up close and personal to the things we study in the books. And it's really awesome. I've heard great experiences from that. That is really cool. Well, I do have a few questions from the students. Um, Now, uh, the first one is Takevian Boyd. He's a sophomore. And he asked, what has been the hardest part of technology that you've had to learn on your job? Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, that's a, that's hard too. Um, I will say, hmm, hardest thing of technology wise. I will say a lot of things have just, you just takes practice and practice makes it a bit easier. For me, I will say getting started was the graphics. And like I said, that learning curve from my other station to this station, there's a lot of nitpicky um, things that, that you have to do and you have to get used to it to be able to do it in a quickly manner and get your forecast ready for a newscast. So there were times where I couldn't even show graphics because they weren't ready. I just wasn't prepared. And that's when I started coming even earlier, like even earlier than two hours before a newscast because I wanted the most efficient and the best product to put on air you know I wanted my graphics to be pristine and I just needed some extra time and sometimes that's that's okay you know I made myself like worried about it but now I'm talking and I can do those same graphics that took me 30 minutes now I can do them in about three four minutes and that sounds really dramatic but that's exactly what what it was because we're putting when I tell you we're putting every single thing on in the atmosphere on a graphic we're putting the low the high the cold front we're putting exactly how it moves with the the progression of of days for three days we put that on one of our graphics and for me it was hard to get used to because I didn't have to do that at my job before but it's just getting used to that we also have a thing called ENPS that's what Tao was showing y'all if y'all if y'all could see it's what we put all of our scripts in our rundown our supers our names are on that all kinds of things so that took a little bit of getting used to as well making sure all of those required things were in that before the newscast starts. So very time management. I had to get used to it, um, but I would say the graphics for sure. And then as soon as you get used to it, it'll probably change and we got to learn something else. Exactly. exactly. You're right about that because we'll get a sales up there. Uh, they, they're in a whole different part of the, of the station, the building, but sales will come to us all the time and say, hey, can you make this kind of graphic? Can you do this every newscast to get this sponsored? Because obviously everything runs off of money, right? But we've got awesome sponsors that will 
pay us to, you know, put out a certain thing, every single newscast, get their logo on it. And like you said, that's another thing we got to add to our things, our list of things to do. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep learning for sure. Love it. Uh, this is Rondell Ellis. He's in ninth grade. And he asked, do you ever get nervous when you're about to be on television? I do not get nervous anymore, but it took some time for sure. When I first went on air, um, like actually on air at WVUA in Tuscaloosa, I was a nervous wreck. I was, I mean, palms sweaty. I was shaking. You could hear my voice crack, you know, and I was, I was very nervous because it's just, it, it doesn't, you don't, it's something you can't prepare for. Although it was fine. I won't say it was good by any means, but it was fine. You know, they, they kept me, they didn't fire me after it. So that that's the one good thing. But after that, it just takes repetition and people will tell you that, but it really does. It takes repetition now. And there's still times where like something will happen where I've got to think quick. I've got to think on the spot. I've got to troubleshoot the best way I know how to, my graphics will stop, you know, and sometimes it's hard to multitask and do all that. And in those moments, I do maybe get a little bit nervous um, just because I don't want to I don't want to look silly on air. I don't want to say something wrong. But most of the time now, it's just second nature. I don't really get nervous. Um, I just it's funny because sometimes I get nervous talking in front of people still. But talking to a camera because my friends and family will make fun of me. They're like, you talk in front of all kinds of people all the time, hundreds of people. And I'm like, but it's different. I'm looking in front of a camera, not to a bunch of people. So, yes, I wow. don't really get. So. I just got one more. This is Michael Sherrill. He's a sophomore, one of our football players here at Velma Jackson. Uh, and he asked, what is what part of your job do you enjoy the most? That's a great question. I was hoping someone would ask that because I almost put it on the PowerPoint. Um, but I enjoy this. I really do. I wouldn't say it's maybe my number one because uh, I don't get to do it enough. I wish I got to do it more, but I love talking to students. I love talking to even adults. I just love getting out in the community. Um, I, I was asked to go to the mustard seed when I first started here and give oh, a little wow. weather course them, for them. And it was amazing. That's a, a special place in my heart is special needs. And, um, so it was awesome, but I love meeting new people. I love all kinds of stuff that JTV does that gives us the opportunity to get involved. And then whenever like this, when someone in the community reaches out to me, I absolutely love giving my time, sharing my experience and my personal um, just history and story. But I will say probably my number one thing that I love the most about my job, it's also the hardest thing, but it's severe weather coverage because it's tolling, it's mentally exhausting, it's physically exhausting, and it takes a lot out of you. Sometimes I've had experiences where people criticize me or they get mad or I say something wrong and then they make fun of me and whatever. But in the, at the end of the day, what I do, I feel like matters and it does save people's life. And that's why I do what I do. I love the weather, but unfortunately weather can be brutal here in Mississippi and it kills people. It is destructive. It's damaging. It's, I mean, from one end of the spectrum to the other, from heat waves to freezes and, and, tornadoes that rip through town like everything from one end of the spectrum to the other that's my favorite part of it is being on air and it's it's when people tell me to personal experiences like hey I got this notification I watched you guys on air night of March 24 2023 you know whatever it may be little bitty things it just it makes my day it makes me happy um so that's my favorite part of my job it's the most rewarding Wow, that's awesome. Well, we're almost out of time, and we thank you so much uh, for showing us around and uh, and telling us about this really cool career. But just a couple things before we go. First of all, tell us when we can see you on TV. Okay. Well, um, it, it's usually different. It's sometimes different, but now it's a little bit more regular. So Monday through Friday, I'm on from 4.30 to 7 a.m. That's our morning newscast. And then I'm also, we're doing cut-ins from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. in between national news. So you'll catch me on there, giving a little snippet of my forecast and then another time at 9 a.m for our live at nine i'll have two weather hits then and um typically i'm not doing the noon but if we've got someone out i'll be doing the noon so usually i'm just here monday through friday and i'll be on 4 30 to 7 a.m 
Yeah, and it, it, you know that's also on the WJT uh, on, the, on the WJTV app as well. So even if you're not in front of a TV, you could always watch. And now before we go, um, just let these kids know why does meteorology really need uh, talented people to think about getting into it? Well, um, a lot of reasons, like you've mentioned, um, we can't many businesses can't function without meteorologists as far as military, the Air Force, um, we've got National Weather Service, they're so crucial to everyday life. And one thing I always tell people, another thing that sparked my interest was like, many jobs affect many people, but there is one thing that affects every single person every day, and it's the weather. <laughs> Everyone is going to be affected, whether it's sunny and 75, whether it is freezing and dangerously cold, you know, it's going to affect everyone. And they always are talking about it. So how fun for you to know what you're talking about. It's my favorite thing when someone I go out somewhere and, um, you know, at the grocery store or whatever, and someone's telling me like, oh, it's going to be cold this week. It's going to be they're telling me the forecast, which is just they don't know who I am sometimes. But it's funny because I'm like, that's what I do every single day. And that's what everyone's talking about. And so um, but we need them in every field, even if you don't want to be on air, if you don't want to be on TV, if you want to go behind the scenes, you want to work for the government, whatever it may be. We need people to keep people safe. We need to stay informed and we need people with the credentials. We really do. We need people that are educated. You want to trust someone on air when they are telling you about this scary thing that you know nothing about. You want to know that they have the knowledge and intelligence that maybe they say they do or that you think they should have. So we definitely need it. And maybe it's not not for you, but I encourage y'all to at least look into it. Love it. Well, again, we thank you so much for taking some time for us. You got up early and you were able to stay with us. So Gracie Denkos over there, WJTV 12, focused on you. We thank you so much for taking some time for us today. Oh, well, thank y'all so much for listening. I appreciate it. Y'all were great. And I had a great time. Thank y'all. I right, talk to you soon, buddy. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah.